I will discuss four factors that are relevant to how cultural issues inform judicial decision making in Australia. They are first, internal cultural expertise in Australian courts. Second, the admissibility of expert evidence on culture in Australian courts. Third, the availability of authoritative documentary evidence of culture. And fourth, the availability of expert witnesses on culture. Before I address these four issues, it is necessary to make some brief comments about some aspects of Australia's legal system and multiculturalism. The Uniform Evidence Act applies to proceedings before most Australian courts, but generally does not apply to proceedings before administrative tribunals. Proceedings before Australian courts are conducted on an adversarial basis and not on the inquisitorial system that applies in many, many European courts. Uh, this means that in general, courts make decisions based upon the evidence presented by the parties and do not conduct their own investigations. The position, however, is different for administrative tribunals, which are sometimes given inquisitorial powers. Australia's indigenous population, which comprises Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islanders, dates back more than 40,000 years. As at 30 June 2021, that population numbered 984,000, representing 3.8% of Australia's then total population of nearly 26 million. The Indigenous population is culturally diverse, with over 150 languages being spoken. Australia's total population increased dramatically after the Second World War, with sponsored migration from Europe. In recent decades, more migrants have originated from Asian countries such as China and India, and also from New Zealand and other nearby South Pacific countries. Australia has also received refugees, including from Africa and the Middle East. According to the 2021 Australian Census, 51.5% of all people then living in Australia were born overseas or had a parent who was born overseas. The top five countries of birth outside Australia were England, India, mainland China, New Zealand, and the Philippines. Approximately 22.8% of the population, that is around 5.8 million people, spoke a language other than English at home. The most common non-English languages being Mandarin, Arabic, Vietnamese, Cantonese, and Punjabi. I'll now discuss internal cultural expertise in Australian courts. Australian courts have little, if any, internal cultural expertise. Where expert evidence on culture is admitted in court proceedings, the experts are always from outside the court, and they are usually appointed by the parties rather than the court. Australian judges are predominantly of Anglo-Celtic background. It is only in the past 20 years or so that judges from more diverse backgrounds have been appointed. The absence of internal cultural expertise in Australian courts does not necessarily apply to an administrative tribunal, which is not bound by the rules of evidence and exercises inquisitorial powers. Such a tribunal can develop its own internal expertise and rely upon it in making decisions, provided that it discloses to the parties the information it proposes to rely upon and gives them an opportunity to make submissions on that information. For example, when the Commonwealth Administrative Appeals Tribunal hears refugee claims, it is required to take into account country information reports prepared by the Department of Foreign Affairs and Trade. Those reports deal with cultural and other issues that are relevant to the question of whether the claimant has a well-founded fear of being persecuted in his or her country of origin based upon one of the five recognized grounds. I now turn to the admissibility of expert evidence on culture in Australian courts. Expert evidence on culture is potentially admissible under section 79 of the Uniform Evidence Act. 
for evidence on culture to be admissible as expert evidence under that section, the person giving the evidence must have specialized knowledge on the cultural issue based upon his or her training, study or experience. And that opinion must be wholly or substantially based upon that knowledge. If an expert meets these threshold requirements, he or she can give expert evidence Provided the threshold requirements are met, the court does not evaluate the degree of expertise or experience held by the expert in determining whether his or her evidence is admissible. However, that degree can be taken into account in assessing the weight the court will give to the expert's evidence. Similarly, whether an expert is independent or has a relationship with one of the parties is not relevant to the admissibility of the expert's evidence, but it is very relevant to the weight the court will give to the evidence. Ordinarily, independent expert evidence will be given greater weight than expert evidence from a witness who is connected to one of the parties. Section 78 capital A of the Uniform Evidence Act provides that evidence by a member of an indigenous group about the existence or non-existence or the content of the traditional laws and customs of that group can be admissible. As a result of the above statutory requirements for expert evidence on culture to be admissible, such evidence has not been a prominent feature of legal proceedings in Australia. It has been used mainly in cases involving our indigenous population, family law, criminal law and immigration law. Anthropological expert evidence is commonly admitted under section 79 of the Uniform Evidence Act in native title claims brought by indigenous communities. Such claims can be brought where an indigenous community seeks to establish that its members have had a continuous connection with the land or waters of which they claim to be the traditional owners. That connection must date back at least to the time the land or waters were annexed by European settlers. A case where an expert evidence relating to Indigenous art and culture was admitted in a non-native title context is Australian Competition and Consumer Commission against Berube Art Proprietary Limited. That case concerned a successful claim by a regulator alleging that the respondent had engaged in conduct likely to mislead potential purchasers by falsely implying that products had been hand painted by Australian Aboriginal persons in Australia. Evidence on cultural practices is admitted in family law proceedings because culture is relevant to determining what is in the child's best interests particularly where the child is Indigenous. In criminal cases, cultural factors might be relevant on the issue of guilt, where personal subjective elements are involved. One such case is Warren against the Queen, where Aboriginal defendants unsuccessfully relied upon the defence of duress to charges involving the infliction of physical injuries upon the victim. An independent witness gave evidence that under the customary law of the defendant's Aboriginal tribe, they would be severely beaten unless they severely beat the victim as punishment for the victim's alleged breaches of customary law. Issues regarding the admissibility of expert evidence on cultural practices have also arisen in criminal proceedings involving female genital mutilation. In a case called A2 against the Queen, the court held that an expert's opinion on a particular practice within an Indian community was not admissible under Section 79 of the Uniform Evidence Act because it was not based upon an area of specialised knowledge. In other words, one of the preconditions for the admissibility of expert evidence was not met. In the Queen against Singh, a husband was charged with murdering his wife by setting her on fire. The husband's defence was that the burns were self-inflicted. The prosecution sought to rely upon an expert report about aspects of Punjabi Sikh culture 
for the purpose of assisting the jury to understand the victim's behaviour, including why she had not reported to police prior acts of domestic violence by her husband. The court held that the report did not satisfy Section 79 of the Uniform Evidence Act, in part because the expert specialised knowledge was too narrow. Cultural factors feature more prominently at the sentencing stage of the criminal process because a defendant's personal circumstances, including his or her cultural background where relevant, must be taken into account by the court in deciding an appropriate sentence. Evidence of the defendant's personal circumstances is usually given in the form of a report by a psychiatrist or psychologist, which is based upon information provided by the defendant. These experts are usually selected and paid by the defendant and may, where relevant, express an opinion on whether the defendant's upbringing and cultural background play, played a role in the offending. In immigration cases, evidence on culture tends to be used in claims for refugee status and in deportation cases. In refugee cases, a claimant may rely upon expert evidence about his or her cultural group and how that group is persecuted in his or her country of origin. That evidence may seek to contradict any country information report prepared by the Department of Foreign Affairs and Trade. For example, a report prepared by the United Nations High Commissioner for Refugees on a particular country may be used to contradict the department's country information report. In deportation cases, the person facing deportation may rely upon evidence about factors relating to his or her culture that might cause him or her hardship if he or she is reported to his country of origin. For example, based upon cultural and other information provided by the applicant, a psychiatrist or psychologist may express an opinion about the effects of deportation upon the applicant. I'll now discuss the availability of authoritative documentary evidence on culture. Expert evidence on culture is potentially admissible under Section 144 of the Uniform Evidence Act. For a court to rely upon a cultural matter under that section, that matter must not be reasonably open to question and either be common knowledge in the locality in which the proceeding is being held or generally, or capable of verification by reference to a document, the authority of which cannot reasonably be questioned. Finally, I turn to the availability of expert witnesses on culture in Australia. The parties to criminal or civil proceedings may call expert witnesses to give evidence on a matter within their expertise. Civil procedure legislation or court rules may confer power on the court to appoint an expert to inquire into and report on any issue in the proceeding. I'm not aware of any case where a court has used such a power to appoint an expert to report on cultural issues in a proceeding involving private litigants. Courts have access to online information about interpreters accredited by the National Accreditation Authority for Translators and Interpreters, but they do not have a comprehensive register or database of expert witnesses on particular cultures. Anthropologists with expertise on Indigenous culture can be readily identified. It is likely that there are experts, particularly at universities, who could give expert evidence on linguistic issues and historical issues relating to some cultural groups. Also, leaders of particular cultural groups might be able to give evidence regarding certain customs, such as wedding dowries, and a senior cleric of a particular religion might be able to give evidence about the principles and practices of that religion. Because of the limited use of expert witnesses on culture to date, Beyond these examples, there may be difficulty in identifying individuals who may be able to qualify as expert witnesses in particular cultures. It must be borne in mind that our indigenous population and many cultural groups are not homogenous, but have internal diversity. It must also be borne in mind that some cultural groups are small in number, and it would be difficult to find cultural experts regarding that group. In conclusion, 
expert evidence on culture has not been a prominent feature of proceedings in Australian courts. This is partly due to the statutory requirements for the admissibility of such evidence. Such statutory requirements for the admissibility of such evidence, sorry, such evidence is used mainly in cases involving Australia's indigenous population, family law, criminal law, and immigration law. Australia does not have a comprehensive register or database of expert witnesses on culture, and finding an individual who may be able to qualify as an expert witness in particular cultures may be problematic. I thank you very much.